Hey guys. Um, well, this is a continuation of your notes for 10-4. So it's like 10-4 day two. And before we get started, I have just three more things to write on your fun fact sheet. Don't worry. You don't need to copy everything that's on the board. I think just what's in blue. I don't even know if you can see what's in blue, but I'll tell you what to write. Um, and some of you might not even need to write it because it's going to make so much sense that you're just going to be able to think of it every time you need it. <clears throat> so, um, a reminder of what factorial means. Five factorial means you start with five and you multiply by every number leading down to one. So in this, in one of our tests today, you're going to have to compare factorials. So if you look at six factorial over five factorial, think about it. If you write it out and you write it out, these are all going to cancel, right? And all you're going to be left with is just six. So we're going, to, we're going to use that line of thinking here in just a bit. What if you have n factorial? So n is the highest number you start with, and you multiply by each consecutive decreasing integer. So n times the next one lower, times the next one lower, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, now, here's what I want you to write. If we have n factorial over n minus 1 factorial, this is just you thinking right here, okay? So you might not want to write this if you're running out of room on your, on your fun fact sheet. This is just us thinking. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on. n minus 1 factorial starts here. The next one is n minus 2 and so on. You can see that all from n minus 1 down is all going to cancel with the entire denominator. And I'm just left with N. That's what I want you to write on your paper. So N factorial over N minus 1 factorial is just N. Like I said, when you get to that point in your uh, one of your tests that you're using today, you're probably just going to know. It's just going to make perfect sense to you. Um, what if you have N plus 1 factorial over N factorial? So this is one higher than N. So this is where you start. The next one down is plain N. The next one down is n minus 1, n minus, and so on. Here we're starting with n. You can see what cancels, and I'm left with n minus 1. That's what I wanted you to write down. What if you have n plus 2 factorial over n factorial? Start with n plus 2. One lower is n plus 1. One lower is n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on. And you can see from the n's down, cancel, and I'm left with n plus 2 times n plus 1. Okay? This is going to be useful when we do the ratio test, which is actually my favorite. Like, it's kind of my go-to most times. So, you got your 10-4 notes as well as uh, your big list of uh, table of convergence tests. I think we have four left. We've got alternating series, integral, ratio, and root today. Now, I'm not sure what order your notes are in. I'm going to go the order that mine are in. Um, so that's okay if I lose you. If, if you turn the page and what you're looking for is not there, just pause the video and find me. Um, you can't be too far off, okay? Um, so I'm going to start with alternating series test. I do believe this picks up where we left off in your packet. All right, alternating series test can be used when you have an alternating series. So by alternating series, I mean every other term is a negative. Okay, so this represents each term. We know that one of our terms is going to be positive, the next one's going to be negative, the next one's going to be positive, and so on. Um, if we can break the negative apart, so if we can write each term, separate the, the oscillating negative off of it. So basically, let's look at, let's kind of make our new, let's kind of make a new series. Let's make a new series without the every other negative. We're going to make new terms for a new series. And when we do that, our terms are going to be positive. We don't have this negative oscillating back and forth anymore. Okay, so we're going to try to take this, pull the negative one off of it, and look at what the series would look like without the negative on it. 
So, if, as n approaches infinity, if your term, if the limit of your, how do I say this? If, you're, if each individual term is approaching zero, as, they, as n gets large, if your terms are approaching zero, remember this is just for alternating series. If your terms approach zero, and if this is a decreasing sequence, which means each consecutive term gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, then we can say, uh, and these, these kind of go together, but then we can say, all right, so the original sequence, the one that does alternate back and forth, positive, negative, positive, negative, does converge. Keep in mind, um, if, our, if your series isn't alternating, this is not a good test. Um, there was an nth term, there was an nth term divergence test, and that's for any sequence that's not alternating. And we said we couldn't, we couldn't make a conclusion if the limit didn't equal z, if the limit didn't equal zero. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, we couldn't make a conclusion knowing that the limit was zero. We can only make a conclusion if the limit didn't equal zero. Anyway, for alternating series, if you meet those two requirements, then you can say that the series converges. So in looking at this, this one, this one is what I would call a sub n. I would call it a sub n. Let's look at a sub n without the negative there. So I think b sub n, so this is just uh, negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one. That's all that is. So basically what's left after you pull out that? You've basically just got one over n. Now let's go through our three tests. Is the, are my terms greater than or equal to zero? Where did it say that? Yeah. Are my terms greater than or equal to zero? Check. Does the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n equals 0? It does. Check. And does this sequence decrease? I think it does. Whoa. 1 over 1, 1 over 2. 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5. Yes, it decreases. So I can say my original, I'm not going to rewrite it, converges by the alternating series test. And I'm totally going to use an abbreviation for that. Now, go to your convergence tests and where it says alternating series. Hang on, I have written a note to myself uh, because I ran into some trouble somewhere. Mm. Okay, so something that I kind of did some investigation and found out, um, it's what it's saying here is that each next term needs to be smaller than the term before it, right? Because you've got a sub n, a sub n plus one, a sub n plus two, a sub n plus three, so each consecutive term is supposed to be smaller. It's supposed to be a decreasing series or sequence. Um, and this, we can say that, yes, this does have to happen eventually. Eventually. <laughs> so there were some where... It, start, they, it started out without meeting this requirement, but I could tell, I, I wrote a few terms out, and I could tell once I got past a certain point, they were definitely going to be decreasing from that point on. Um, so that is, that's a good thing to know as you're doing your tests on your series. Okay, next I've got the ratio test.
Find your ratio test. There we go. And before we start the ratio test, I want to just remind you of a geometric series. So remember in a geometric series, um, like let's say that your first term is 1. It doesn't matter what your first term is, but you're multiplying by r each time. So we've got r to the first plus r to the second plus r to the third plus r to the fourth and so on and so on. In a geometric sequence, anytime I grab two consecutive terms and compare them, like I can grab these two terms and I can compare them, I'm dividing them out and I get r. I get what I'm multiplying by. It's the whole point of a geometric series, right? What you're multiplying by, you should get that when you take two of your terms and divide them. Okay, and also keep in mind the series does converge when what you get when you divide, divide two consecutive terms is less than one. Well, the absolute value of what you get when you divide the consecutive terms is less than one. Okay, that's where the ratio test comes in. Think about the math involved to come up with each term. We call that a sub n. So let's take the math involved to find a sub n. Let's compare it with what would the next term look like. So if I subbed in n plus 1 where the n goes, what would it look like? And we're going to absolute value these because remember it's the absolute value of r that's less than 1. That's what we want to happen. So if we compare these and we get less than 1, then our series converges. However, if we compare them and get greater than 1, our series, we can say, definitely diverges. Unfortunately, if we compare them and we get one, it's inconclusive and we have to do another test. All righty, let's, let's see what one of these looks like. Um, I usually use the ratio test when I have a factorial. So, let's see. This is a sub n. Let's look at a sub n plus 1. Okay, see what I did there? I just... This is the representation of the nth term. This is the representation of the n plus 1th term. Let's compare them. Don't forget your absolute values. And we're, we, yes, we're comparing them, but I want to know what happens as n goes to infinity. So we're looking way out in our terms. Next line, I'm saying it's an equivalent statement. Okay, um, I'm thinking about dropping the absolute value bars. Let me just kind of think through this out loud. I think I can. I think I can drop the absolute value bars. I don't think they're needed. Why do I not think they're needed? They're not needed. 
the lowest value of n that we'll be looking at is n equals 1. So this is already going to be positive. This is going to be positive. These are going to be positive. You know what? I'm so done with them. Huh. Much better. Much better. Okay. So... Um, check out check out these two. I've got n factorial and n plus 1 factorial. You can reduce. So this would be n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 and so on. So everything from the n's on down are going to cancel. And all I have left is n plus 1. Okay. n to the 10th is still down there and n plus 1 to the 10th is still up top. So this one came down right here. These two reduced to this, and this came down here. Now, keep going. Um, these quantities match, so I can cancel out one of these quantities, and this becomes to the ninth power. Y'all can do this. It's kind of weird. But this is this would, if you multiplied it out, which you're not going to, uh, this would be a ninth degree polynomial. This would be a tenth degree polynomial. So your degree on the bottom is greater than your degree on the top. Your denominator is growing way faster than your numerator. And so the limit here is zero. Well, since zero is less than 1, I can say that my series converges by the ratio test. Right? I got an answer of 0, and my answer was less than 1, so it converges. Did you like that one? I think those are fun. All right, root test. Um, I use the I I use the root test. I'm just not a huge fan of the root test. Um, so I will often. So this is this is my I keep calling. I, I want to say a function. This is the math behind getting each term. Um, what if all of this is being raised to the one over n power? No, 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 no. I'm going, sorry, I'm going to raise it to the 1 over n power. So here's each, here's the representation of each of my terms. I'm going to nth root it. The math that I'm going to show you is I'm going to raise it to the 1 over n power. If I do a limit on that as n approaches infinity and I get less than 1, it converges. Greater than 1, it diverges. If it equals 1, test is inconclusive. And like I said up here, Factorial is your clue to use the root, uh, sorry, factorial is always my clue to use the ratio test. When something's being raised to the n power, that's a good clue to use the root test. So, this is a sub n, and I want to do a limit on it as n approaches infinity, and I want to take a sub n and root it, so I'm going to use the 1 over n power, n power. So here's what it's going to look like. Limit as n approaches infinity, a sub n, which is that I'm going to root it. So to use the root test, 
I take a sub n, I'm, I'm nth rooting it and doing a limit on it. And what I get, since these cancel each other out, I just get the fraction in the parentheses, which is a quadratic over a quadratic. So as n goes to infinity, the, this fraction approaches 1 half. Since 1 half is less than 1, I can say it converges by the root test. I've been through a couple tests. Let me go back here and see if there's anything we need to add. Ratio. That's good. Oh. Let's add for ratio. We don't have to write the whole thing out. But if the limit equals 1, it's inconclusive. Same thing for the root. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to this and just mention it. No, 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 false. This is, here we go. The next page that I want to do with you is the one that starts with the proof, but I want to jump to the integral test. Yep, that's the next one. All right, this is kind of cool, and I, I, I think this is going to make s perfect sense to you. Ready? Um, let's suppose you have a series, okay, and this is of course the math behind how to get each term in the series. Let's take the math that represents each term and let's call it a function, right? So whatever the math is here, whether it's a fraction or something to a power or something, it's got an n in it. Let's call it a function in terms of n. The integral test is going to work if our function is positive. So if our function is above the x-axis, then the integral test will work. So basically, these terms have to be positive. So think about this. Do an integral. Pretend there's an x there. Do an integral on that function, on the math behind each term. Do an integral. What does an integral do? Well, first of all, let me point out it's an improper integral. Um, it's starting at 1. This finds the area under f, little f. This finds the area under little f. How does it do that? It uses infinite rectangles. What is the width of each rectangle? Super thin dx. What is the height of each rectangle? Well, it's just each y value. It's just each term of my, se of my sequence. And this guy multiplies each y value times the thickness of the rectangle and then adds them all together. And that's what a series does. It takes each term and adds them all together. So, if you can find an answer to this integral, you can say it converges. Well, hold on, hold on. If this improper integral converges, what does that mean? That means if you can find an answer to the improper integral, then the series converges. If your improper integral uh, diverges, and you all have done these before, you can you figure out that, that you can't find the area under the curve. It's just infinity. 
So if the integral diverges, then the series is going to diverge. Okay, so we can try one. Um, <laughs> this is funny. Um, I'm going to use the integral test on this just to kind of show you how the integral test goes. And some of you are like, why would you do that? This is so easy. Just go with me, okay? So let's do this is what I'm calling a sub n. So basically, basically f of x would be represented by 1 over x squared. So I'm going to do the integral um, from 1 to infinity. 1 over x squared dx. This is an improper integral, so to evaluate it properly, we're going to have to do, let's go from 1 to b, and we'll send b to infinity. So I did a quick antiderivative on that. No, negative one. Yeah. Negative one over b minus negative one over one. And as b heads to infinity, this heads to zero, I get an answer of one. And my integral test says, so I got one, and if you've been working with um, the, the ratio test or retest or whatever, you're like, oh no, that's a bad thing. No, for an integral test, that's a good thing. If I can determine that the area under the curve has a specific value, then that's the sum of your series. So I can say it converges by the integral test. So were some of you out there like, oh, come on, don't do an integral test. It's easy. It's just a p-series p is greater than 1, it converges. True. And when you're checking your answers with my answer keys, sometimes you see I take the most convoluted route to get to do a test when it was just so obvious that there was such an easier way to do it. So, um, but you know, if we both do them correctly, we're going to both get the same answer. You just got to make sure you're legal along the way. Um, now, while we're here, I skipped this one up here, and I put a video in Google Classroom. I posted a link to a video that does the proof on why this converges. So it's kind of weird. This, sorry, why this diverges. This one diverges. This one converges. And the, the video is pretty cool. It's short. It's like six and a half minutes. I encourage you to watch. Why, why does that converge? You'll follow it. It's, it's Sal from Khan Academy. He doesn't go over your head. Um, so I'll let you do the proof on that. Um, and before I go any further, let's make a couple of notes on, on this piece of paper somewhere. So make a note to yourself that... Make a note to yourself that this one from 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges.
and n equals 1 to infinity 1 over n squared converges. Converges. Very important. And these will really come in useful on like, um, oops, I ran off the page. Those will really come in useful when you're doing things like direct comparison or limit comparison. If you can grab one of these two that you already know, um, that'll help you when doing those tests. Okay. Did we get through them all? Please tell me you went through them all. Got through them all. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, a oh. couple more examples. Alrighty, it's okay, we can do this. Um, yep, I see something to an nth power, so I'm definitely going to try the root test. So I'm gonna go limit approaches infinity. Let's see. The current a sub n, so n to the n over 3 to the 1 plus 3n, and I'm going to nth root that. All right, multiply your exponents. So multiply this exponent times this one, and this exponent times these. So what you're looking at here is as n goes to infinity, this is infinity. This is 3 to the 0-ish plus 3. This is basically 27. This is headed toward infinity. This one is headed toward 27. So let's see. What was that? That was the root test. And on my paper, the root test says when I get an answer greater than one, it's greater than one, so I can say this diverges by the root test. And I'll, oh, 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 let's do this one. This one's a fun one. I'll do the root test on it as well. Limit as n approaches infinity, now, let me tell you, on the root test, you can't like, it's got to be one single root. It's got to be the nth root, one time, one time only. So I'm going to do I can't do like 1 over n squared or anything. I've got to do the nth root, just like that. Okay, hmm. Hmm. Well, let me work on the inside of this a little bit. Limit n goes to infinity. On the inside, well, here. I'm just going to scoot this over, and I'm going to squeeze in there times 1 over n and 1 over n. That's legal. I can do that. Squeeze that in there. I'm not changing the value of the fraction. So I, I want those to go away. Because right now, if I just sub in infinity, I've got, let's see, what do I have? 
ratio, I've got one to the infinity. So you're, that's a um, indeterminate form. So now I've got that gone. Right? Uh, that one's gone. One plus one over n. still to the n power. And on the top, one to the one to the n is just one. So limit uh. I think I'm going to let you figure out the rest. <laughs>